Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, I hope you are all doing well, inshallah. This is a response to my dear brother and Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq. May Allah bless him and preserve him uh, regarding some of his recent comments. The objective of this response is uh, to clarify a few of the important things which the Sheikh mentioned. However, I want to categorically mention from the onset that I acknowledge the khidmat and the great services the Sheikh is doing for the deen, mashallah. Uh, many people have accepted Islam through his efforts. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his efforts, grant him further tawfiq, and also grant me the tawfiq to inshallah do something similar. It's important to make this clarification because sometimes in polemical discourse we forget the good and the khair of our interlocutor. However, this response is needed as some of his recent comments are not only detrimental to Islam and Muslims, but I believe are also detrimental to the Sheikh's da'wah. Many brothers have contacted me and they are quite troubled and concerned regarding his comments. So let's just watch the following clip. Now, <clears throat> regarding the Oban, I know you may have studied with some Deobandis, but then I'm sure, and I have as well. I started out my own studies originally with Deobandis as well. You, you do realize that within that umbrella, there's a lot of differences. Yeah. Right? Amongst Deobandis, there are those that teach things like Wahdatul Wujud, that, you know, Allah is in things, and, you know, and obviously we would condemn that because that is a very clear Aqidah violation. So my dear brothers and sisters, there's a few things I want to clarify regarding this clip. The first thing is that the word Deobandi or Barelvi are not theological schools like Ashaira, Maturidiyya or Atharia, nor are there jurisprudential schools like the Hanafiya, Malikiya, Shafi'iya, Hanabila, etc. Rather, they are Islamic institutes, seminaries, that are based on geographical, demographical reasons. And now, alhamdulillah, throughout the world, there are thousands of institutes that follow their syllabus. Very similar to the 6th century Madrasa Nidhamiya that we had, which had many Islamic institutes, or Ma Wara An Nahar, Transoxania, or Balkh, Bukhara, Samarqand, etc. So this is the first thing, that these two uh, groups are not theological or jurisprudential groups and nor should we identify our theology or fiqh through these two groups. The second thing I want to mention that Sheikh has confused two different sciences and two different disciplines that use the same word. So in the clip he referred to Wahdul Wujud, Wahdatul Wujud, unity of existence. Now this one word is utilized in two different disciplines and subjects, one in philosophy and the other in tasawwuf. In philosophy is known as pantheism. Pantheism is the doctrine that the divine God is inside the makhluk, inside the creation. So like Sheikh referred to that God is inside things. And this is kufr, kufr bawah is clear conspicuous kufr, there is no doubt about this. And no Muslim, I want to emphasize, no Muslim can believe that God is inside the creation. He does hulul and he dwells inside the creation. So this is one meaning of the word wahdul wujud. The other meaning, on the other hand, we have the science of tasawwuf. So in tasawwuf, when the word wahdul wujud uh, is mentioned, unity of existence. So in pantheism is unity of existence when the khaliq and the makhluk, they unite physically. In tasawwuf, however, it means wahdul wujud, unity of existence, existence yani, there's only one true existence. There's only one true, real, complete existence and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because every other existence, meaning the creation, is contingent is dependent on Allah, is subjected to transience and fana'iyat. And this notion is clearly 
uh, in the Quran, Kullu man alayha fan, where Allah mentions everything will perish and only wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram, only the entity of Allah will remain. Ya ayyuhan nas antum al fuqara ila Allah, wallahu al ghani, O people, you are in need of Allah. Allah is only independent, He is the only being that is independent, is as samad, etc. So this uh, concept that only Allah's entity and His essence is the real and complete essence is from the Quran and this is what the Sufiyah mean by this by the word Wahdul Wujud so what Shaykh has done he has confused and misunderstood uh, these two meanings and hence he has fallen into error and the other thing I want to emphasize on that the nomenclature or terminology of Wahdul Wujud belongs to the science of Tasawwuf not Aqeedah but Sheikh mentioned that this violates Aqeedah. It doesn't violate Aqeedah because it's not part of Aqeedah. It is not part of Aqeedah. No book uh, of the Shaira Maturidiyah explained this as our uh, uh, doctrine or, or, or any theological discourse uh, for that matter. The example of this confusion can be if we take the word Sahih. So the word Sahih, loosely translated, authentic, correct. In Arabic morphology, in sarf, the word sahih refers to a word which has no hamza, no harf illa, waw alif ya, and no two letters that are the same. So for example, the word nasara. Nasara in Arabic morphology is sahih. Why? Because it doesn't have hamza, it doesn't have an harf illa, waw alif ya, and it doesn't have two letters which are the same. Now if somebody confuses this terminology of Sahih with the terminology of the science of Hadith, where the hadith, hadith is Sahih, then this is clear sign of uh, you know, ignorance with all due respect. Now, so that's clear. Wahdul Wujud, what we mean by Wahdul Wujud, and also this is not an issue of Aqeedah, and no Muslim believes in this. And the fatawa are very clear. The fatawa are very clear. Mufti Taki Uthmani, may Allah preserve him. The reason I'm quoting him is because Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq mentioned him in this panel where he was questioning Brother Daniel Hakikudju. And with all due respect, that panel seemed like there was an interrogation. Anyway, I don't want to go into that. So he referred to Sheikh Mufti Taki Uthmani. Mufti Taki Uthmani, inside his Fatawa Uthmani, which is in three volumes, first volume, page 66, he clearly mentions that this wrong meaning of a philosophical meaning, it can lead to kufr, if not it is kufr. Inshallah, we will put the scans of this fatwa at the end of this video. I want to just give a few quotes uh, of a Salafi scholar where he also mentions something very similar. Uh, and I will quote, inshallah, Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi. And just to clarify, I have a plethora of copies of quotes from the Salafi scholars as well as Ahlul Hadith scholars of the subcontinent, many years ago I made a video on Wahdul Wujud and I cited many Ahlul Hadith scholars of the subcontinent, which I believe Sheikh Uthman will revere and respect, who have mentioned that this meaning, the correct meaning of Wahdul Wujud is in line of the, with the Quran and Sunnah. But I will mention all of them now. If we ever have a discussion in the future, inshallah, I will reference those quotes. But for now, I have this in front of me, Madarij As-Salikin. مَدَارِجُ السَّالِكِينَ بَيْنَ مَنَازِلْ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ This is a three volume, four volume work. I have this in one volume because it's dense. And this book is by Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, who we believe uh, to be a scholar of Islam and also who we revere as well as the Salafi brothers, they also respect him. So in here I have many quotes, but there's three quotes that I want to mention. The first two are to do with Tasawwuf. Uh, and this third quote is to do with this problem that we are facing with Sheikh Uthman. So the first quote is in Manzilatul Khuluq, where Imam Ibn Qayyim, Imam Ibn Qayyim sorry, he talks about the ranks and status of ethics. So he mentions, Ad-Deen kulluhu khuluq, that the entirety of deen is ethics, good character. فَمَنْ زَادَ عَلَيْكَ فِي الْخُلُقِ Whoever supersedes you, in good character, Zada alayka fi deen, he has superseded you in deen. Wa kathalika tasawwuf. And same goes for tasawwuf. And then he mentions, quoting Imam al Katani, at tasawwuf huwa al khuluq. That tasawwuf is good character. Tasawwuf is about ethics. 
فَمَنْ زَادَ عَلَيْكَ فِي الْخُلُقِ Whoever supersedes you in good character, فَقَدْ زَادَ عَلَيْكَ فِي التَّصَوُّفِ Indeed, he has superseded you in tasawwuf. Second quote, where he talks about tasawwuf and defines tasawwuf. In the same chapter, he mentions at tasawwuf زَاوِيَةٌ مِنْ زَوَايَاءَ السُّلُوكِ الْحَقِيقِ وَتَسْكِيَةُ النَّفْسِ وَتَهْذِيبُهَا Tasawwuf is one of the elements of real warfaring, yani suluk, and the purification and rectification of the soul. Tazkiyatun nafs wa tahdibuha. Why? So, so the soul can prepare uh, its journey for the companionship of the greater company, al rafiq al-a'la, and the company of the of the one who you love. Wa ma'iyyati man tuhibbuhu. Fa inna al-mar'a. Third quote, brothers, I'm only giving you a brief quote. The reality is this entire book, which is in three, four volumes, I've got the dense version in one volume, is a, descent, is a defense of the Sawuf and a defense of Sufiya. And this third quote is very important. Please listen very carefully. This is in the chapter of uh, al Safa, Manzila al Safa, the status of Safa. And he mentions Hafiz ibn Qayyim, Rahimahullah. فَإِيَّاكَ ثُمَّ إِيَّاكَ وَالْأَلْفَاضَ الْمُجْمَلَةَ الْمُشْتَبِهَةَ الَّتِي وَقَعَ إِصْطِلَاحُ الْقَوْمِ عَلَيْهَا Be completely aware of ambiguous, obscure words that are the terminology of the community, meaning the people of the Sawuf, as the context is clear. So when it comes to their terminologies and their nomenclatures, be very careful, Imam Ibn Qayyim is advising. فَإِنَّهَا أَصْلُ الْبَلَاءُ Why? Because they are indeed root of difficulties and calamities. Wahiya Mawridu Siddiq wa Zindiq. And it is the crossroad for the Siddiq, for the truthful one, and for the heretic. Meaning, in this discourse, we realize who is the truthful one and who is the heretic. And I want to stress the Hasha, God forbid, I'm not postulating at all that Sheikh Uthman is a heretic or he's a deviant as such, but I'm just quoting. Uh, this passage. I don't want people to uh, think I am referring to him as Zindiq and if I do come across like this, I do ask for forgiveness in advance. Imam Ibn Qayyim then mentions فَإِذَا سَمِعَ الضَّعِيفَ الْمَعْرِفَةَ وَالْعِلْ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَفْضَ وَالْإِتِصَالِ وَالْفِصَالِ وَالْمُسَامَرَ وَالْمَكَالَمَةَ وَأَنَّهُ لَا وَأَنَّهُ لَا وُجُودَ فِي الْحَقِيقَةِ إِلَّا وُجُودَ اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ وُجُودَ الْكَائِنَاتِ خِيَارٌ وَوَهْمٌ وَهُوَ بِمَنْزِلَةِ وُجُودِ الظِّلِّ الْقَائِمِ غَيْرِهِ He mentions when a person who is weak in recognizing and knowing Allah Most High, hears the words like ittisal. Yes, this is a, a terminology of tasawwuf. Infisal, musamara, mukalama. Or he hears the words that la wujuda fil haqiqa illa wujud Allah. And that nothing is in existence in reality except Allah. And that the existence of the worlds وَأَنَّ وُجُوهُ الْكَائِنَاتِ خِيَالٌ وَوَهْمٌ uh, are thoughts and illusions which exist on account of another. So when you hear these terminologies that only true existence is Allah and everything else is illusion or it's contingent, what happens? Then this person with a weak mind and who doesn't know Allah, you hear from him فَاسْمَعْ مِنْهُ مَا يَمْلَأُ الْآذَانَ مِنْ حُلُولٍ وَاتِّحَادٍ وَالشَّطَحَاتِ وَالشَّطَحَاتِ then you hear from him that which fills the ears with the words of hulul, indwelling, and ittihad, unification, and shatahat, words of ecstasy. Imam ibn Qayyim then mentions, وَلَعَارِفُونَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ أَطْلَقُوا هَذِي الْأَلْفَاضُ وَنَحْوَهَا وَأَرَادُوا بِهَا مَعَانِي صَحِيحَةً فِي أَنفُسِهَا فَغَلَطَ الْغَالِطُونَ فِي فَهْمِ مَا أَرَادُوهُ وَنَسَبُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ إِلْحَادِهِمْ وَكُفْرِهِ when the Arifs, meaning those who recognize these terminologies, on the other hand, use these words and others like them, they intend the correct inherent meaning. But some err in understanding what they mean and attribute heresy and kufr to them. Subhanallah. So Imam al Qayyim, the summation of this is that the Sufiya, they use words which can have two meanings, a correct and incorrect. A proper meaning, sahih and kufr. But those with weak minds and weak knowledge, and who don't know Allah properly, they attribute the wrong meaning towards, uh, towards the Sufiya. Again, I want to clarify, Sheikh Uthman is not doing this deliberately. I believe he's a sincere brother, uh, mashallah, he's a genuine brother. And this is a pure, uh, I would say, an awareness of, of the discourse.
Now, even in Bukhari, we find examples where when something is compared of the creation with Allah is almost non-existence. Now, here we're talking about wujud, the existence of Allah. When it's compared with the existence of the creation, the creation existence is almost kal'adam, almost non-existence. Likewise, when the attributes of Allah are compared with the attributes of the, uh, of the creation, again, is almost non-existence. And the example uh, of this is the narration, lengthy narration in Kitab al-Ilm in Bukhari, hadith number 122, where the story of Khazir alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salatu salam is mentioned in great length. And one of the parts in there is Musa alayhi salam and Khazir alayhi salam, they're on the boat, they're on journey. A sparrow bird comes, sits on the edge of the boat, and then the uh, bird inserts its beak inside the ocean once or twice. And then Khazir alayhi salam says to Musa, I'm paraphrasing the hadith, that my and your knowledge combined is not my and your knowledge combined compared to the knowledge of Allah is not even like this drop of the ocean. Subhanallah. Now Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he was a great prophet. He was from the Ulul Azm prophets. And Khazir alayhi salam also had a special type of knowledge. But their knowledge combined now is almost nothing. Why? Because they're comparing this with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So likewise, yes, we do exist. There's an entire cosmos. But this compared to the wujud, the wajibul wujud of Allah, the nested existence, which is pre-eternal, everlasting, dissimilar to the creation, is not subjected to transience and fanaiyat. The creation is nothing. And the other thing I want to clarify, my dear friends, is that no Muslim believes in such meaning, which is kufr, the pantheism, the philosophical meaning. Also the fatawa, all of the fatawa of the ulama of Deoband are very clear on this matter. And the ulama, the ashaira maturidiyya, whether they uh, follow the, uh, they're from the Deobandi seminary or the Berevi seminary in, 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 in fiqh, they follow the Hanifi fiqh. And when it comes to aqidah, they follow the ashaira maturidiyya, they will all cle clearly tell you this. And the other clarification I want to make is, that yes, I understand and I appreciate the negative connotation of the, some of the Sufia because of the videos, etc. online. But it is epistemologically and methodologically incorrect to brush the entire group with the same brush because of a few individuals. And dare I say, this, methodology, uh, this method and this modus operandi is very similar to Thomas, uh, Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson, he judges the entire, entirety of Muslims because of the actions of a few. Muslims. When we refer to the Sufia, we are talking about the righteous, notable Sufia like Junaid al-Baghdadi, Fudayr bin Iyad, uh, Bishri Hafi, uh, Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullahi Ali Majma'in. Likewise, when we refer to the Muhaddithun, we are not referring to the pathological liars, those who used to fabricate hadith, but we are talking about Imam Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, etc. In the same manner, when we talk about the Fuqaha, we are talking about the noble group of Fuqaha and not those people who give, you know, spurious and dodgy fatwas. And finally, I want to mention this, that Sheikh Uthman in that panel, he mentioned that some of the scholars, even though I'm not a scholar, I'm a student of knowledge, inshallah, they are uncomfortable discussing this topic. So I want to make this very clear that I'm willing to discuss this topic with Sheikh Uthman, privately, publicly, yes, inshallah. Uh, this topic, any other topic to do with Ashaira Maturidiyya, he also mentioned Hayati Mamati. I'm also willing to discuss that topic, inshallah. But with the intention of having a good understanding of one another. I don't want this to be a, a, a polemical back and forth. This is a time where we need to unite. And what I mean by unity is work together uh, and have common ground, work together uh, on common issues. And this is a desideratum of our time, a need of our time where we are able to overlook these issues and work together uh, for the greater good of the Ummah. The Ummah uh, is going through a lot of difficulties and we need to uh, discuss these issues in, in an amicable manner, in a cordial, a cordial manner uh, without uh, aggravating and exacerbating the disunity that we are, we are experiencing with the Ummah. So this is my invitation and my respectful request to Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq, may Allah bless him. Uh, that inshallah I'm ready to have this discussion. There's nothing to hide, alhamdulillah. We are also upon clarity. Yes, you claim to follow Quran, Sunnah, and the way of the Salaf Ummah, alhamdulillah. You know, I'm not going to uh, doubt your intention. But at the same time, 
who please give us that benefit of doubt that we also are following Quran and Sunnah uh, as understood by the Salaf of this Ummah. And finally, I want to request the followers of Sheikh Uthman and those who are watching this that be uh, mindful when you are commenting uh, of one another. Uh, remember, ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. Every word we utter, everything we write, Allah will take us to an account on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Sheikh Uthman, bless his, him and his efforts, bless all the brothers and sisters that have watched this. May Allah protect you all. Barakallahu feekum wa bikum. Jazakumullah khairan for watching this. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.